people know, you know, I know people who do heroin, and they they say there's more heroin and it's easier to get now. You know, what the fuck, man? What what is really going on? Then you find out that the president of, of Afghanistan, this is absolute fact, president of Afghanistan, his brother was being paid by the CIA for years. Like our government dollars were going to pay the brother of the president of Afghanistan who's in the poppy business. This guy is involved in the opium trade. This guy is involved in the heroin trade. And he's an employee of the CIA. Like, really? Is it that blatant? Is it that obvious? There's, for sure, there's a ton of fucking corruption when it comes to the, the higher levels of government. But are they really selling drugs? Are they really doing it that openly? It seems ridiculous, right? It seems like there's no way that could be possible. There's no way it could be that corrupt. If it was, we would have heard about it. But when you start researching the history of the CIA, like they've been accused of doing this forever. Not just accused of doing this by people who don't make any sense, like crazy people and you know, internet conspiracy theorists, but no, they've been accused of doing it by people who used to work for the CIA. They've been accused of doing it by people who've actually just flown in the drugs. There's a great case about a guy named Barry Seals from Mena, Arkansas. This guy used to drive in, fly into Mena, Arkansas and drop off big packages of cocaine. I think we talked about this before, or I talked about this before. And anyway, these two kids uh, inadvertently were there when the, the cocaine got dropped. They uh, were they witnessed you know what had happened. So they took these kids and they murdered them and they left their bodies on the train tracks. And the excuse, the official excuse that the police used was that these kids had gotten high and that they had fallen asleep on the plane tracks because they were on drugs. Well, the mothers of the, the kids forced autopsies. The parents forced aut autopsies. They didn't want to do autopsies, but they forced them, and they, they got them done, and it turns out that these kids had been murdered. They had been stabbed multiple times before they had been put on these train tracks. So um, then the investigation goes further, and it turns out this guy named Barry Seals, who's a CIA employee, and there's, you know, documented. This guy's got a great long history with the CIA. There's, you know, tons of pictures. There's tons of, you know, documentation on this guy, and this guy was flying in drugs from South America. And that's what he did. He did it for the CIA. And right when he was about to go testify, the guy gets murdered. He gets assassinated uh, with George Bush's phone number in his pocket. <laughs> um, so there's that guy. There's, uh, there's another guy named Michael Rupert. Michael Rupert uh, has a, a website now, and he's got a, a bunch of books on the whole situation. But his uh, story is that he was working for the LAPD. Uh, I'm not sure if he worked in narcotics, but he's involved somehow or another in some narcotics case. And it turns out that the CIA was involved and the CIA was protecting these people. and The CIA was selling drugs and he uh, went to try to report it. They squashed everything and he just went public with everything. And it's, you know, he gets very little attention. I mean, it's really shocking how little attention he gets. But uh, he's, a, he's a fascinating dude. This uh, Michael Rupert guy, he's got a, a couple uh, really fascinating books. Uh, I think uh, The End of the Rubicon is one, and uh, that's the one I've read. And there's, uh, he's, got, he's got a few other ones, but basically like going into great depth and detail, all of his research on the CIA and their involvement in drugs. Why? Why would they do that? Why would our government do that? Because it's fucking, there's a lot of goddamn money in it. I think they could justify that there's so much money involved in drugs and someone's gonna make that money people are addicted to drugs like why don't we make that money and at least that money is being made by the good guys I mean that's like the most idealistic point of view make sure your kids don't do drugs make sure no one you love do, does drugs but let's be honest there are people out there that are gonna do drugs and if anybody should make the money it should be the good guys I can see people falling for that but the bottom line is it's it's all greed. It's all this nasty, evil greed. That, that's the whole reason why some drugs are legal and some drugs are illegal. It's because when they make them illegal, they can control what you do. They can. You can't control things that are really easy to grow, like marijuana. It's one of the main reasons why marijuana is illegal. It's because it's so goddamn easy to grow. You can just plant seeds out in a field; it'll grow on its own. You know, you don't even need to help it. I mean, it's a really hardy plant, and uh, I know a lot of morons that grow pot. And when, you know, it's an easy thing to do like that, you can't control that. You know, they're, they're not going to be able to control it. There's going to be people selling it left and right. They're not going to get taxes from that because people are just going to exchange cash or, or whatever the fuck they're going to do with it. 
you're, you're not going to be able to wrap something up the way that you can wrap up Oxycontins or something like that. You know, it's very difficult to produce an Oxycontin. You know, they like that. They don't like heroin. Heroin is just like, what are you doing? You're grow growing a plant and then you're scraping some shit off the plant and you're selling it. No, stop. That's illegal. We won't let you do that. But we will let you buy these pills that are basically the same goddamn thing. They're just made by a pharmaceutical company and they process it and they make this orally ingestible heroin. And that's what Oxycontin is. I mean, it literally, they call it hillbilly heroin. It's fucking heroin. It really is heroin. You're just eating it. You know, you're eating it in a pill form. Just like Marinol is THC in a pill form. But that stuff's supposed to suck. I've talked to people that say that, first of all, THC is only one active element in marijuana. There's like a whole bunch of them. It's way better to get the actual stuff from the plant. You know, I don't know if that's true with heroin. I've never done heroin. I've never done Marinol either. I wouldn't do heroin. I'm scared of anything that's addictive. But if I was a musician, I might consider it. I might, <laughs> I might just snort a little every now and then, you know, write down once today and never again or something. Try to convince myself that somehow or another I wouldn't be addicted. I don't know how addictive it really is. Uh, I hear varying reports. You know, the, the problem I have with talk, whenever someone talks about things being addictive and not being addicted is that alcohol is addictive. You know, people get addicted to alcohol, but I'm not addicted to it, so I don't get that. I mean, I can, I could, if, if someone told me right now, I could never have another beer or another glass of wine for the rest of my life, I'd be like, okay, 